Hello and welcome back to Virtual Worship Service with Sherry Hales Ministries. I'm Sherry Hales and I welcome you to Virtual Worship Service. If you've been joining me, you know we always start with worship. It's a time to just clear your mind from the clutter that you've gathered from the week and to just cast it all on God. God tells us that we can cast our cares on him because he cares for us. So that means we don't have to carry along in our daily lives the baggage, the clutter, the things that we collect from day to day. Those things that make us feel heavy and weighted down, the burdens, you know, a mean word from someone maybe an argument, maybe a disagreement, misunderstanding, anything, maybe a negative report from your doctor. But all of those things fall under the category of casting your cares on the Lord. It doesn't matter what the care, whether it's a small care or a big care. God tells us not to worry, to give it to him. So when we give it to him, we are not neglecting it. We are putting it in hands that are more capable than our own. And so once we have done that, we're letting God know that we trust him. We're relying on him and that we need him to help us. And so let it go, give it to God, and in your heart and mind, worship him, thanking him that he's going to make it all right. Can you worship him with me today? <laughs> Just raise your hands. Honor him. Thank him. Think about him. <coughs> Excuse me. Love on him. Glorify him. Let him know that you care about him. He cares about us. Let him know that you care about him too. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you. We bless your wonderful, wonderful holy name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We worship you. We magnify you. We honor you. We thank you for being here with us in this virtual worship service. Thank you that your presence is here among us, Lord. There is no distance in the spirit. Thank you for your loving arms that embrace us. And let us know that you care. That you're working all things together for our good because we are trusting in you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We glorify that wonderful name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And we can continue on in worship for a few more seconds or so. Let's just continue to just worship him. He's a wonderful, wonderful, mighty, mighty God. He's a wonderful God. 
We bless his holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Here's a song that says, What a Mighty God We Serve. <coughs> Excuse me. He is truly a mighty God. If you know that song, let's praise him together today. Let's praise him because he is a mighty God. He's a wonderful, wonderful God. And if you know that song, just sing along. It's very simple. <coughs> What a mighty God we serve. He's wonderful. What a mighty God we serve. <clears throat> Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. He's wonderful, isn't he? What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Just something to just praise him. Just to let him know, Lord, we honor you. This is not about a performance. It's just about praising the Lord Jesus and blessing his wonderful name. And there's another song. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. We wanna bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Hallelujah. <laughs> I hope that that lifted your spirit some. Again, not about performance. We're not trying to perform today. We're just praising the Lord. And if you love the Lord, I hope that you praised him as well with me. And so... This, the message today is empathy is a two-way road. Let's invite the Lord in to this virtual worship service. Father God, we just thank you for your presence that we feel already. Lord, I ask that you will speak to us today. All of us, speak to us. Let us hear you. Let us hear from you. Lord, we know that everything is in vain without you. Speak to us today. We need to hear from you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And so empathy is a two-way street. That is the title of the message today. And Matthew 25, 40 says, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. To me, that is a very profound scripture because it's letting us know that God watches what we do. He watches the way that we treat each other. He watches us. And the things that we do to others, God is receiving that as if we are doing it to him. So when we bless other people, God is receiving that as if we are blessing him. And likewise, when we mistreat people, it is also as if we are mistreating the Lord himself because he loves us. When we are children of God, he wants us to follow the example that Jesus Christ himself demonstrated for us when he walked on this earth among men. The Lord demonstrated empathy. He cared about people. He cared about other people and he saw them with eyes of dignity as far as dignifying the fact that they are another human being. He saw them. He couldn't take another person 
and mistreat them because he saw the image of his father in those people. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't mistreat another. As children of God, we need to follow that same example. When we see another person, see the God that is in them because God is in each and every one of us. The very fact that we live and we move and have our being, it says that God is still abiding in us because we can't, we can't exist without the breath of life, which is God himself. So when we treat others good, God sees that as treating him good. When we treat each other, each other bad, God sees that as treating him bad. He wants us to honor one another with dignity, to see value in one another, to respect another person's humanity. We can't mistreat another because we value them as a human being. We see that they are a creation of God, just as we are. And then that valuing of people also extends to the other things that God created. We value. We value the things that he created, whether it is a person or whether it is another life form, maybe an animal, maybe a plant, whatever it is. But we have value for that thing because God saw fit to give it life. And so we value it. It is the value of life. The value of the fact that God saw fit to let it exist. If God saw fit to put something here, what is man that he feels that it is a throwaway thing? There is no throwaway thing in God. We are all of value. People have greatness within them. All people. It doesn't matter the labels that society imposes to make some people seem like they are better and some people to seem like they are less or less valued. That's not how God sees us. These systems that man come up with, comes up with to measure value, they are meaningless to God. God sees a man as a man. In fact, the Bible says he is no respecter of man. And man meaning man and woman, Adam. Because when, at, when God created Adam, Eve was in him. And so all of humanity, God values. God does not see people like people see people. He sees us with eyes of compassion and love. And that is extends whether you are a child of God or not. God still values and loves you. And then Psalm 145, 9 says, The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. The Lord has compassion on all he has made that means all that, that that goes as i was just saying that goes beyond even just people it goes to all of creation the lord himself values all of creation so how can a man that showed up on this earth one day that god decided to grace him or her with, with life, to allow that person to be. He saw fit to create them. And they show up on this earth and then they grow up and they acquire knowledge from books and things that they've heard and other people. And then they get to a point where they feel like all truth comes from them. They are the ones who can say who has value and who doesn't. It's like they forgot that they're just a man. Just like all of us that are humans. We are just people. But some people elevate themselves 
to seem like they're gods within themselves. They get to choose who has value, who doesn't have value, who matters, who doesn't. But God sees it. He sees it all. He sees the things that man does. So nothing is hidden, hidden from the Lord and someday we'll all be judged. God sees people through eyes of love and that is how he wants us to see one another because the word of God even says to love your neighbor as you love yourself. You don't have to like your neighbor, but when you love your neighbor, that means that you value them because they are a human being. And so I also want to read a psalm. And this is, let's see. This is Psalm 4. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible, if you want to follow along. It says, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing? Selah. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in all and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, Who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety I pray um, that the Lord will add a blessing to the reading of this word and I also pray that that psalm was a blessing to you and I also would like to read a poem if you have been listening and joining me you know that I do write poetry as well and my books are available on Amazon if you're interested. This particular poem is called Wake Up. It is called Wake Up. Why are you still dreaming? Wake up and live your life today. Don't allow that dream to slowly steal your life away. So wrapped up in the dream, you can't appreciate this day. So caught up in a dream, you can't see blessings right in your face. My friend, you've got a dilemma. Pardon the bluntness that I show, but I thought that I should shake you and wake you from your deep slumber. It's true, I'm on the outside. It's also true, I'm looking in. You don't appreciate the gifts and blessings that you have. You are dissatisfied, but you are so loved by family and friends. You take their love for granted. You don't reciprocate the gift. So you just stop all your snoring. You're snoozing away your life. Wake up and see your blessings. Wake up from that dream and live your life. And that particular poem you know, it, the Bible talks about people being in slumber. And it is that poem is just exposing the, the state um, 
of man when he can be disillusioned with life. So much to the point that he does not value himself. It is possible not to even have empathy for your own self. And so this poem is about waking up to realize that you are a gift and a blessing. You have blessings within yourself. However you feel, you may have been so, you know, with life had so many difficult situations that you don't see it anymore. You don't see that you really even have anything to offer anymore, but you do. Because once God puts things in you, they're always there. Life can't get it out. You're, you are valuable and he doesn't make any of us without value. And so that poem is just to let you know, to let us know that we are valuable in God's eyes. So today's message was about empathy as a two-way street. So we need to have empathy for others, but we also need to have empathy for ourselves. I pray that this message was a blessing to you today. And I know that some of you that may hear this poem at some point, maybe today, tomorrow, or maybe sometime down the road, you might not know the Lord. You might not, you know, even really understand what, what is she talking about? You know, you, but you want to know him. You want to know the Lord. You want to be a, be, be a child of God. If that's true for you, if you want to get to know the Lord, you can say this prayer after me. It's all it takes is a simple prayer to invite the Lord into your life. And you can just repeat after me. Dear God in heaven, I come to you today to answer the call of salvation. I admit that I'm a sinner in need of a savior, lost in need of guidance and direction. I come to you and I repent, Lord, of my sins. And I know that means that I turn away from them and I go in a different direction. Lord, please forgive my every sin and come into my heart. Be my personal Lord and Savior. I know that in being my Savior, you save my soul and redeem me from the penalty of sin. I know that in being my Lord, I must learn of you and follow you and be one with you in covenant. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, that you are now my Lord and Savior, and I am now born again, a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. Glory be to God. If you said that prayer, all of heaven is rejoicing. The Bible tells us in Luke 15, 10, that even when one person repents, heaven rejoices. There is a heavenly party going on for you right now a birthday party a born again party glory be to god can you imagine that heaven is is so happy and rejoicing for you and i rejoice for you too and i welcome you i welcome you my brother my sister in christ it's a wonderful thing to know the lord and to be accounted as his child glory be to god it's a wonderful thing there's no greater gift. If you have accepted the Lord, you have the best gift that there is to have. I welcome you. Glory be to God. And if you don't have a church to attend that you attend and you don't have a ministry to follow along with, I welcome you to follow along with us. You can visit my website, which is www.sherryhellsministries.weebly.com. And we have Bible study and Bible teaching. We have prayer and virtual worship service. So I invite you to follow along. And if this message has been a blessing to you today, this virtual worship service, and you want to sow into this ministry, you can do that on my website as well. This is something that is that the Lord gives to do in worship. The Lord honors giving. And this is something that it was in, established by the Lord. And so you can find that on my website as well if you'd like to. Thank you so much. I pray that, um, that you were blessed and that the Lord spoke to you because I'm just a submitted vessel, but God knows everything. And so I pray that there was something that was said that blessed your life real good. 
Ask that the Lord will bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you, lift up his countenance upon you, be gracious to you, and give you peace. Until the next time, be blessed and walk with God.